Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be taking the Cloud Energy 48 volt, 60 amp hour, 200 amp continuous discharge battery, lithium battery. Replace the lead acids that were in here and see what happens. So we're going to go from this to this. Go. Let's get going. All right, we got the 48 volt, 60 amp hour cloud energy battery here. I already took it out of the box, but you get the battery, the gauge, a couple ratchet traps to hold it down if you're not gonna have a better way to mount it. I prefer not to use these. Comes with a heavy duty 20 amp charger. Connect it two different ways, either directly to the battery or with alligator clips. We're not going to need these for our installation. Also comes with some terminal caps and the wiring for the gauge. It's max discharge of 200 amps continuous, uh, 315 for 30 seconds and 600 for six seconds I believe. I'll have to double check. I'll put it below if it's a little bit different. So we are looking at 18 and a quarter from mount to mount. Case is nine and a half. Top is about 11 and a half. Top length is 18 and a half. So it is actually a little bit shorter on the below. And height wise, we are at just under seven and a half. Now let's go put it in right here. But once you get all the batteries out, get your compartment clean, you're gonna wanna take out your charging port, which, all right guys, sorry about this, but my mic must've been on mute. So what I'm going over here is the empty battery compartment after we take all the blood acid batteries out and then how to take everything apart. So we're gonna take off this trim ring that's usually right here. You just get a small screwdriver or a pick and you just kind of pop it in there on each side and that little trim ring will pop right off. <clears throat> Next, we're gonna be taking out some T30 bolts here, here, the back, these are T40s here, here, two more on the other side. And then you're also gonna have three right across the front, which is here here and one more over here and these are going to let us take out that lower trim piece which you lift up on the body and then you can just pull that lower trim piece out all right so here we go with the t30 we're going to pull this bolt out here so we can free up the body a little bit take this one out so we can free that side up too and then we're going to take out the t40s for the floorboard and for the lower trim panel And then what I'll usually do is I'll take that C-clamp right here and just kind of clamp the carpet flooring to the uh, puddle to keep it up and out of the way for me. <clears throat> so now what we can do is take these three bolts out that we already loosened up, put them in safekeeping, lift up on the body, and then just kind of pull and rotate this piece out and it'll pop right out for you. If it is a little bit tight, there's two more T30s on the back side of where the seat goes. That'll give you a little more wiggle room if you need it, but usually I don't have to do that. Okay, now once you get here to pull out the charge port, there's going to be three Phillips screws here, here, and here. So we'll take those three screws out so that that'll loosen up the charge port for us so that we'll be able to pull this out. Now this is all a step that you don't need to do if you're not taking out the charge port and if you're only going to disconnect it. But I'm putting in a uh, NOCO style charge port that can accept just a regular extension cord. So that's why we're going to take it out right here. So now it's loose. Right, 
Next, we're going to take the C40 out of the top of the computer, pull that out, and then this, the computer will tilt forward and then pull up. So, forward and up. And this is going to give us access to the controller, the solenoid, all the, the charge port wires, and everything else we need to get to. So there's three wires that are going to be coming from the charge port. There's going to be a red wire, a black wire, and a blue wire. <clears throat> this is the red wire, which goes to the top of the solenoid. So you need a half inch drive, take this nut off, and then you're going to take off just the uh, charge wire from the charge port, and then put the nut back on. Don't remove any of the other wires. Okay, tighten this up. Now you want to get it tight, but you don't want to go like overkill and strip anything. But you do want it nice and snug so it won't move on you. Next on this blue wire, it's just a little bullet connector. Just pull it apart and you're good to go there. Which only leaves the one black wire. And this black wire goes to the B negative terminal on the controller, which is just another half inch bolt. Sometimes you got to pop off the little plug on top just to gain some access to it. Just if you do do that, make sure you plug it back in, otherwise nothing will work. And again, this is just a half inch, 13 mil. You're going to pull this bolt out, take off just the charge wire, but leave, and leave the other ground wire that's there, and put the bolt back in. And again, tighten it tight, but not overkill. And now we can pull the whole charge port right out, fully disconnected. On the uh, 15 and up, there is no onboard computer, so this makes this really, really just this simple. Two bolts and a little wire disconnect, and it's done. It's gone. If you don't want to take the charge port out, then you can just pull that stuff off, cut the wires, put the wires to the side, whatever you want. Just this way to make sure that if anyone plugs a charger into that port by accident, it doesn't fry your battery or your controller or anything else. Okay, for the 04 to 08 and a half with the four 12 volt batteries, and then you have the big section right in the middle. This is how you're going to want to bypass the charger so that you can take this charge port out or just not make sure that you don't use it anymore. Um, if you follow this thin black gray wire, it's going to come here. You want to unplug that, just disconnect that. This red wire. This is going to go all the way back over to the other side, and it's going to connect to the top of the solenoid. You just want to use a half inch socket, pull just this wire off, and then put the nut back on so that all the other wires stay on the solenoid. This gray, uh, this black wire right here, sorry, is going to come through this connector. You can disconnect that, but normally it would go to right here, and then this would go right here. This goes over to the B minus terminal on the controller. So what we want to do is we want to cut here and here and then on this wire that goes to the B negative side of the controller you can either cap it off or you can cut it down closer next to the terminal and then just tape it off or cap it off there. <clears throat> and that takes care of that aspect. Now what you want to do on the wires coming out of the onboard computer is you're going to want to cut them on the onboard computer side so if the connector is still connected you're going to cut them on this side you want to cap all the wires off except for the blue and the white the blue and the white you're going to want to put those together and then just make sure that that stays connected and then this goes into the vehicle harness and you are bypassed and ready to go all right so now we can make sure we get the rest of our wires back in here and this is going to go down and then just kind of pivot it back in. Sometimes it'll get stuck on some of the wires, just make sure everything fits good. And there's a little piece in the front that I'm gonna to point to in a second that's gotta slip behind. And if it doesn't, it sticks up like that. So then when it goes in, it'll just slide right back, it's right there. And then boom, it goes right back in, put your T40 back in, and now you're done behind the computer. You don't have to do anything else. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is get all this stuff out of the way and then we can lift up on the body and stick this trim piece back in and it'll all fall right back into place there we 
go. So now we're going to put these T40s back in. <coughs> All right. So I lost this footage. Unless I can find it, I'll put it back in beforehand. But using a multi-tool, I just kind of went right under here, cut out this middle trim piece. And then there's another piece right here I cut out, another piece right here I cut out, and one right here I cut out. So I'll have enough length to put the battery in. So get our wires up out of the way. And let's see if this thing fits. Okay, got a battery where we want it, charger where we want it. Um, all the wires are nice and neat, zip tied up out of the way. Now let's just get this mounted with some health top and screws. All right, so we got that mounted. Now we're gonna mount our charger. Right now. We want to attach our battery terminals. So on ours, we're only going to have the charger and the main terminals. If you have a 12 volt converter, those are going to go on your post first because you're going to want to go with the smallest gauge wire to the thickest gauge wire. So the thickest gauge wire is always against the battery. So starting with our negatives, we have our negative for our charger. We have our negative main. Connect that up. And the same on the positive. Charger, main, connect. All right, and we're good to go to see if we have anything that works. Let's give it a shot. All right, we got power button on to run and run. Key on, hit reverse. Oh, got our buzzer. Hit reverse. Jeff forward, how about that? All right. All right, now let's test it out. This is going to be the control screen that comes with the cloud energy. You have your power button right here. You just push it. It'll turn on. You have three pages of information. This first page is going to show you percentage left, if there's any current amp draw, what the current voltage is, what the temperature of the uh, temperature sensors inside the battery are reading, and a rough idea on how long is left at the current draw. So obviously there's no draw right now, so it thinks there's a ton of time left. If you go to page two. This is where you can control the discharge and the charge on and off. And it gives you your max temperature, your minimum temperature, um, and also what the status is and the number of cycles. So all you would do is actually just push it. Oops. And then you can turn the discharge on or off. And you can do the same for the charge. Turn it off and then back on. And on the third page is going to be all your cells. It's going to list all the voltages for the cells. And then you're going to have your low cell in blue and your high cell in green. And go right back here. And it gives you, again, gives you percentages and everything else. This is the screen that you'd normally keep it on. And now we'll go over the app. All right. We've got forward. We've got reverse. We've got a buzzer. Everything's working as it should. Charger turns on when we plug it in. We're all set there. Okay, you're gonna go into this app right here. Find your battery. You may have to hit link. Mine's already linked. 
So you can see, it shows 99% charge right now. There's no current. It shows the voltage. All your cells down here. If you want to go to your controls, you can go here. You can turn charging on and off. You can do the same with the discharge. Now, if you do it with the discharge, the nice thing is you shut the discharge off. Technically, it's a security system because it can't be turned back on without the app. Turn that back on. Again, it shows you all your cells and everything else here. Your history. Auto balance can calibrate calibrations if you want to add some warnings. Gives you a lot of the information you need that it actually is on the gauge too. This is one reason I didn't connect the gauges. I'll just watch this instead without having to worry about running another wire, putting another gauge somewhere on the dash or anything like that. But nice little app. Let you see what you need to see. Uh, I will update this video in a little while once I get some more runtime on this. But if you got any questions or anything else, just leave them down in the comments and please like and subscribe share with your friends so that more people can understand the benefits of going lithium because this alone will last longer than any stick lead acid setup let me know thanks